In this exercise we're going to look at the cogs in a frontal plane, so in a side to side plane we're going to explore the relationship between the pelvis, the ribs and the head and how they should move ideally or how they should be able to move and you can use this as a, as a self-assessment to see if, if there's an issue with you if, if one side is worse than the other or if you struggle entirely or if one of these movements is sore. So the only thing you need is a step, uh, you could use a stack of books, you could use your stairs, just a step that's maybe uh, six inches, like a 10 centimeters high. And you want to use your the front of your pelvis as a reference. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hike the side I'm working on. So that's why I use the step. You, you don't need to keep both legs straight. You can have a slight bend in the elevated leg, but you want to make sure that you maintain that height position. You don't want to bend to the point that they remain level. So that's the first thing. We're going to create a, a gentle hike here and you can check in. Is this sore? Is this uncomfortable? Uh, if not, then don't do this yet. But that's a good assessment. Is one side sore versus the other? And that's something uh, that you can check back on over time to gauge your progress. But if this is pain free, we'll go ahead. So we have this natural hike here. Um, so what this means is the pelvis is now tilted this way. So in the COGS concept, what we should have then is an opposition of the rib cage. So pelvis goes this way, then the ribs go that way in order to counterbalance. Because if they don't counterbalance, then if I hike this, then my, I end up here. And our goal is always to keep the eyes level with the horizon. And that's just a hardwired reflex. So we have a hike here. And the way we're going to drive this side bend, this opposition in the rib cage, is to simply reach down, as if you've got a really deep pocket, reach down as far as you comfortably can. So opening up this, this side and then closing and contracting that side. A couple of things you want to be aware of. You don't want to shift your pelvis away. So you don't want to reach down by shifting away, which isn't really well, a lateral flexion of the rib cage. It's simply a shift that's assisting that, that position. And now the pelvis is actually level. So we want to maintain this height here and think of side bending down as we reach down into that pocket. This should be pain free. It might feel like a bit of effort, that's fine, but it shouldn't aggravate your symptoms. If it does, don't do it or only do as much as you can. So if you can reach this far without pain, reach that far. If you can reach all the way down to here, Great, do that. Now, take a minute, get comfortable with that, reaching down. I want you to reach down on an inhale, and I want you to try and think of inhaling into the opening area. So you, you're, you might find that you have differences uh, between the sides of your diaphragm. You can breathe into your belly, but more so on one side versus the other. And that's important. It's important to balance that out. So. The way we're going to do that is as I reach down by side flexing with, with my rib cage, driving with the fingers, reaching down and give yourself the focus. You're reaching to pick up some money or a slice of cake in your pocket, whatever it is. You're breathing into these ribs. You want to feel like you're opening up this area. And then as you exhale, usual exhale through the nose, comfortable, you're coming back to your starting position. Now, do that on both sides, check in, is one side easier, is, are they both difficult but in different ways, whatever it is, just gather information. The more information you have, the better. Now we're going to incorporate the head. So, if you notice, as I'm reaching down, I'm just letting the head go with the ribs. But again, my, when I'm walking in gait in life, I'm always trying to keep my eyes level with the horizon. It's, it's just a reflex that we have. So we're going to incorporate that to include the head and to work on a number of other neurological things. So we're still reaching down, but we're going to try and counterbalance the head. So the head always maps the pelvis in, in, in this scenario. So because the pelvis is here then the head is going to do the same thing, it's going to tilt away from the reaching hand. Um, and you can think of this yourself, look in a mirror. Hike here, drop down, now try and get your eyes level. 
do whatever movement you need to do to get your eyes level and you'll find that you'll do this because it's, it's the only realistic option. One thing you can do is you can give yourself a focal point in the distance, you can give yourself a line or whatever a picture of someone you like and you're just going to keep a level gaze on that. So again, inhale, try and inhale into here, open that up, exhale, come back. The next step is about getting this all smooth and like one, one movement rather than height, drop and then counterbalance with the head. It should be actually shifting air across 